Hello to everybody. Uh, my name is Vicente Botet, uh, Scriba. I work for Alcatel Lucent in Lannion in France, a little town. And everything I do for the bus community, it is on my free time. In my work, I have other imperatives. I'm in Spanish and uh, my main interests are in uh, software engineering, uh, language design, uh, concurrency, parallelism. Uh, I, I am a co-author, maintainer of three libraries on Boost, Boost Ratio, Chrono and Thread, and uh, some minor utilities on Boost Utility. Uh, and I have started a lot of things that I have never finished. Some, some words about the boost expected or expected and maybe Andrew, one day uh, we will uh, have this library boost. <coughs> Um, I hope that most of you uh, uh, know the talk of uh, Andrea Alexandrescu uh, about uh, systematic error handling, on which he uh, pro um, exposed the expected class, a little um, but useful expected class. Uh, what uh, we have done is uh, adapt this class with the interface of, uh, boost op uh, of the proposed uh, standard uh, class optional. And uh, we have added some functions that uh, make expected, uh, we can see expected as a monad error. Uh, we are currently uh, working on a proposal for the standard and uh, I see that uh, the proposal uh, should be sent uh, on a week if, I, if we want uh, to, to see this uh, proposal to be analyzed on next June in Rasper Bill. And uh, uh, once the interface will be more stable, uh, the open points will be clarified. Uh, our intention is uh, to uh, propose this library for Boost and uh, if uh, we have enough energy to try to, to port this library to uh, other compilers, uh, comp uh, C++, uh, Oh, sorry, <laughs> The project was born um, on 2013 uh, as a proposal of a, a Google Server of Code uh, project. And uh, this uh, project uh, was not uh, retained because the student, uh, Pierre Talbot, uh, that works currently with me, uh, have chosen other projects and uh, the system uh, that is used on Google Summer of Code, code give the other project. Anyway, uh, Pierre Talbot started just after the summer to work on, on this library. And uh, we have worked uh, more since the, the talk has been, uh, was accepted. You could find uh, 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 the library as it is now on the GitHub repository and the proposal as 
in this uh, web page. Uh, so what what is uh, uh, expected? What is uh, expected of E T? What expected of E T is quite close to optional T, but we want in addition to have uh, the reason why we don't have the value T. Then we can consider that expected E T is either a T or the error E. Then uh, for I guess that most of you have uh, assist to the talk of David uh, and we have here uh, the A or B uh, but uh, with a special meaning for the first argument. The first argument E is uh, intended to, to cover uh, to, to have the error it is and the, and the second argument is to, to have the value we expect yes David what is an error okay uh, an error is anything you want to consider as an error an int, a string, an exception, and anything. So if it can be anything, then what use, of it, what use is it to say that it's an error? Sorry, would you? Could you repeat? I'm saying if it could be anything, then what, what's the utility of saying it's an error? Okay. The question was, uh, what is an error? Uh, in, 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 in the context of this, this class, is anything we, we want to put in this first parameter? I, I don't know if this clarifies. Sorry? How is this class different than, than a variant? Okay. Uh, we then uh, we can uh, see uh, expected ET as a variant of unexpected. The question, uh, the comment was uh, how it is suspected different from variant. Then the single thing that we could say uh, is the main difference is that E, it is here considered as an error. And uh, we will have a different behavior, a specific functions that uh, otherwise uh, I don't see how, how to provide. Maybe we will continue and uh, we will come back to th this difference between variant and expected. Then uh, we have the expected is t plus unexpected e, uh, but t cannot be unexpected e. Okay, uh, in variant, uh, for example, you. You could not repeat the same type. You could not, if I understood, I cannot have variant int int. This is why I have added this unexpected type in order to be able to have uh, unexpected int as a value, but also int as an error. And we want that expected ET 
we have as much as possible as t. This is why uh, the first parameter is with variant we are not able to, to d make this difference. This is the one of the main goals is that w we want to be able to use suspected ET where we use T. And uh, um, what we have done also is to, to add this explicit error type, uh, Alexandrescu um, uh, proposed an expected class that has always an exception pointer as error. Uh, we have added this uh, explicit parameter in order to be able to have any kind of uh, errors and be able to use this class on context on which exceptions are not desirable. Well, uh, how do we declare and um, uh, instantiate an uh, object of deep expected? As we are, we have used as much as possible the same design as uh, uh, the proposed of stand the optional uh, proposal and uh, we can uh, create an expected just using the make expected factory function that will have as parameter the, the an instance of the type T or we can use uh, a cost, um, constructor we can assign expected of the same type. The type T could be also move only, uh, and we can use as in uh, optional in place construction, so that we can uh, make the construction as efficient as possible. I will come back to the construction using this uh, aspect tag. Uh, for those that are not, I think that everything is aware, here in place is just a tag that uh, make it possible to, to um, to overload the constructor. Then uh, we have seen how to make an uh, expected that has a value. Now how we make an expected that don't have a value but an error. Then we have the, the factory make an expected that uh, takes as parameter an error and will return an unexpected type. Okay? But here we have on the left uh, an L value of type expected. And we, we want to be able to build any expected from an error without giving explicitly which is the type of the um, of the value. Then uh, we have decided that an expected type is convertible to an expected E is convertible to expected E T. Um, in order to, to do also in place constructor for errors, we have added a uh, in expect tag, and it, this is why we have considered if we need to have an expect 
hashtag that it is uh, more coherent with UNESPECT. But in order to be more mm, close to the, the optional proposed, uh, proposal, I uh, think that we need uh, whatever uh, use in place. Okay. We have uh, now that we can declare unexpected that is, it is default constructed. And the question is how this, what is the, the, the state of this default constructed expected? And also to be to follow the, the optional design, optional uh, defaults to null opt. That is, it, it defaults to the non value <laughs> of the type. Then we have decided that, in, on with respect it, we have the same. When we de default uh, unexpected, its value is the unexpected value. And of course, this could work only if uh, the, expect the error type is default cost constructible. Okay. In the case of optional null opt type, it is default constructive always. In this case, with the, um, this default constructible property depends on the error. We have also followed the, the, the optional design in order to be able to do a reset, reset with uh, uh, this, uh, this syntax. Uh, I don't know uh, on the standard committee how, how and why this was really the, uh, something good. Uh, we have just uh, followed the, the same design. If someone in the room know why, why this uh, was um, a good design. It's the original author of the proposal for optional. Really yes. like that style. He really wanted that. Yes. It, it means you actually lose out on uh, converting constructors. Like it can't construct an optional long from an int or whatever. Or there's a few cases where I can't can't construct an optional string from a thing that converts to string because you get cases where this becomes ambiguous, right? Did you run into that? Something yes, like that? yes, yes, yes. Mm. The, somewhat me. Um, the, com the comment uh, was that uh, this uh, um, allowing this is in order to avoid uh, ambiguity when we uh, want to to build an optional int from a short. Yeah, that's that's it. That, that doesn't work because. We lost that to gain this. Okay. So this was a style decision by the root proposal. And we said, OK. What is the type of curly, empty curly brace when you have it on the right-hand side of the sign? Um, is that an initializer? I think so. Yes. Or by itself? Yeah. I'm So you have to check at runtime if the initializer list is empty? I, I actually I'm not sure that that is an How, initializer well, I, think, I, think, so I, think, default. I think that's why it's like return, brace. It's, it's whatever. the constructor. It's like, yeah. it's the constructor. That it must be the whatever type EI is. That's weird. That's, yeah, it's, it's default yeah. constructing in EI. That's nice because you can write a zero function that you just use curly braces. OK, I am uh, not <laughs> a real, uh, a good, uh, um, I don't know exactly all the, 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 the um, specificities of uh, this. I have just taken and, and <laughs> I, I will need to, to revise and understand better. You know, it's not really something you need to think about for expected, but if we eventually have a variant, 
variant, I assume, is going to have an in-place constructor that in, that in places, you know, oh, I guess variant can have int twice, so you don't have the same problem. But I was wondering if we're going to end up with in place one, in place two, in place three, to know which one I'm in, in placing. Like, well, first we had in place, now we have expected and unexpected. In variant, are we going to have five of them, or maybe it won't be a okay. I, I propose to, to skip this point that uh, I, I don't master very well. Well, on, on which context we, we, we want to use this, this class? Mainly, we want to use it when we return a value but we want to also propagate an error. Then we will most often we will find that this class is the return type of a function. And we want to be able to uh, to check if when we want, when we call to a function that returns uh, unexpected, we want to check immediately if, if there is a value. Then the, we use the explicit bool conversion that will allow us to write things like that. We do assignment on the same time that we are testing and if uh, the read next char function returns unexpected that has a value, we process it and we use the, the reference operator in order to get this, the value. This the reference operator will not uh, has a precondition that the expected has a value. Okay. No. Did you reference the pointer? Uh, uh, when I difference, difference the value. But if the value is a pointer. If the value here is a pointer. If it's a char star. Oh. It's up to you to, to do what you want. So yes, twice. twice. You could have an expected pointer, a yes. You, you are telling me that here you, you need to uh, use the reference twice? If you want to dereference the pointer, but it's inside. Yes, may, maybe, uh, I don't know, uh, if your functions expect a value and not a pointer, uh, right. I don't know. Yes? Do you overload the error operator? <laughs> do so you... Just get, if it's a pointer, it just holds it. Please repeat. Oh, do you overload the error operator? Oh. Yes. 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 Do you overload the arrow operator, the indirection operator? Yes. We did. We have added it also uh, not to, to to be able to forward this indirection when we have a pointer like as value. Okay. Uh, if it's not a pointer, then why should I dereference? I th I think that the idea is we have a class that wraps a value, but we don't. We are not sure that there is always a value, but uh, it seems natural that we use the reference in order to get the, 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 this possible value. That is a store. It is not a store outside, it is a store on the same type, but, and this is uh, in line with the design of optional. Then uh, we have preferred to follow the same design, you know, the, that 
these types can be used. Uh, also optional also has yes. yes. Uh, the next function is value. That uh, has a white contract. That, that means that when you use value and there is not a, va uh, a value stored or unexpected, we will throw the exception that it's, it is stored in. Then... When you, invoke, when you invoke the star operator and, and there's no valid result in there, will you also throw an exception? When we use, the question is, when we use the star, the, the reference operator on unexpected that has uh, no value, that has an exception, uh, do this the reference operator throw an exception? The answer is no. This is undefined behavior. This function uh, has a precondition that the expected need to have a value. If you want to uh, throw an ex exception, you will use the value function. I just wanted to comment. It, it, that seems kind of unexpected to me. <laughs> I, I kind of expect them to work the same for better or worse. It's like vector at versus vector yeah. dereference. Or vector I, square bracket. I, yes. I, yeah, I get that. And I'm not quite happy with that either. But. Okay. The, the idea is uh, if we know that we have a value, we don't need to check again. If you w don't want to care about if there is a value or not, just use value. That too is like optional, is it not? Exactly. The same thing. This is, if you want, this is the same as optional, but we have a little bit more. Questions that we're raising here, I, I presume they've already been discussed and, and raised in regard to optional, and they're kind of resolved. It just—is that am I correct on that? Or? Half correct. Huh? They've been discussed. They're not resolved. Oh, That's okay. why optional is in a TS. I see. So, so the same questions we would have about this, somebody has similar questions about optional yeah. and vice versa. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the comment was. Uh, Robert, this that uh, all this discussion had alre already been uh, so I, I just want to say, well, done. I, I think you're exactly right here, just to do whatever optional does, because then we yes. can have kind of one thing on I will, I will as opposed to add things this is conformant to, to optional. <laughs> okay. Yes? So one place where it seems like this class could diverge from optional is in storing the uh, unexpected value in the bad access. Exception. One way in which this class could differ from optional is uh, how to store the value of the unexpected type that must be there in order to have thrown the exception. That's why we're throwing the exception, to store it in the exception and make it accessible. Is the error? Yes. The yes. And I, I, uh, the difference is that the exception pool uh, will have the, the, the error. And here, sorry, there is an error. We need to be, uh, add yes. bracket E bracket. OK. Uh, the slide. Uh, Inter bracket RC. E. RC, yes. yes. Is, has anybody considered the idea of just defining an expected object as a pair of an error object and an optional object, and then kind of just leveraging on whatever? In other words, making explicit the fact that we're 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 copying or deriving from the, or maybe even just a uh, maybe even simpler, just inheriting from the option, and having that extra error object, uh, extra error. Yeah, extra the error object in, inside. Actually, now that I 
phrase it, I think it seems to me that it would be a candidate for defining in terms of, of one inheritance from uh, the optional type, type, and then whatever they decide with the optional type. You okay, got. the question was uh, have some someone uh, consider to, to define uh, uh, a class uh, that has a pair of error and optional t in order to have this kind of behavior, not that I am aware of, and I think that we need to uh, encapsulate a little bit more. Uh, pair is too general. But what about deriving from optional? Yeah. You can't share uh, storage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, I don't, I don't know about that because, oh, I see share, share storage between the error object and the other because they're mutually exclusive. You're only yes. going have one or the other. No. Yeah, okay, I, I answer certainly there are. I come back in a bit. That ain't a good answer. The, the question, the, the comment of uh, Eric was that here we are sharing the same space in order to store the error on the, on the value. Okay. Uh, so if this expected is actually contains an exception pointer, would yeah. you throw the exception that's stored in the exception? Okay, I have the, the example I have used. Uh, it is a vec with uh, an error that is not a, an exception pointer, and we, we need to wrap uh, this error on an exception. And we have used the same uh, design, optional use, bad optional access. We have bad expected access. If uh, the the question was if the expected uh, had an ex exception pointer, which exception will be thrown? Evidently, the exception that will be thrown is the exception that it is stored on the exception pointer. Okay. We we could could even throw error C. We could. Uh, 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 we can. Uh, <laughs> it would be yeah. Maybe. Mm -hmm. What? We, we can because uh, we can throw any type. Then. I would vote for that. Uh, mm -hmm. if, if, in order to be current, I will expect then that optional throw null up. Could differ because also no default to yeah. throw, right? Whereas but we always I think have that something to throw in, in expected. There's throwing error C will be a valid, very valid option. It's like a yes. feature. Yeah. <laughs> it's like a feature, uh, but singles. Yes. I, 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 I still think having something that's always Even if this is just the base class and the value is contained in a derived class, but you have to parameterize your cache to get the derived, people can still catch on the base class. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, the comment is that uh, consider that uh, it is uh, uh, a good idea to, to throw a, a specific class that could inherit of a uh, base class uh, that could be coached uh, for any any error. Um, we could even uh, think about on the mailing list uh, from the standard proposal. Uh, there, there were some remarks about why. I cannot state which is the exception that will be thrown. I think we can't uh, do that 
just we need to define a little bit, bit more what is the interface of this error type. I have this on my to-do list. I, in the current implementation, uh, we have uh, the possibility of uh, configuring which is the exception that can be thrown. And uh, it consists in using expected with uh, a type that wraps the error C type with the exception that we want to throw. It, it's getting into this, this uh, uh, horse designed by a committee with humps. Uh, I, I, <laughs> I, the implementation that we have currently allows things like that. I have no this in, on the proposal because this more complex, but What uh, instead of using try catch and the, and the code above? Yes, introduce. So there's a method get error. The question is here. Yes, yes, yes. The question, the question is uh, what, what, what uh, sorry. The, the question is uh, could we recover the error? No, in the first case. No, the first in the case. first case. How, how do we write the else case? You know, I want to say else, go, go look at yes, the error. Yes, there is a dot error method that uh, uh, has a precondition that we have an error store. Does it throw if there is no error? And th <laughs> don't throw. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no exception. And the question was, uh, does uh, this error function throw if there is an error? The answer is no. Yes? So I've written some error classes before where uh, if you try to assign subsequently, like you were in a loop for a set of if statements, you try to subsequently assign to a failed option that hadn't been checked for failure, <coughs> that it would abort. Okay. Does this do that if you do serial signs over the Okay. Uh, the comment is that uh, uh, there is some usage that uh, we can store on this some, some kind of class that will be uh, used to store an error. Uh, that if we r try to reassign to, to uh, already assigned error, uh, some failure uh, occurs. Uh, I have not considered th this uh, use case at all. Uh, other have also requested, uh, but what we want is that if, if there is an error, s we, we need to be to, to have some way to, to hand the error. And if we have something that force us to get this error, it is better. And someone has proposed that expected, if no, no one has observed the error on, it, on the destructor, it should t call to terminate. But this is you are talking about reassignment uh, and others have uh, requested that, that uh, we need to handle the, the error bef before the destructor. Again, By default, the class don't do that. Uh, 
we can configure using an error that that does just this. If you define an error class that uh, don't allow multiple assignments, you will have what you want. If you define an error class that uh, call to terminate on the structure if the value has been not observed, then it's up to you to use uh, the class. But as I said, this needs some kind of protocol between the expected class and the error class. Okay, we'll, uh, this is globally we have seen what uh, expected provide in addition to optional. We'll see with uh, more examples uh, the monadic part using uh, an example that uh, has been used many, many times in order to explain uh, how, how, how monads work. So uh, I have no reference to, to all these. I have found a lot of uh, tutorials that use this, this, these examples. Then Why don't use exceptions? Then we need, we need to compare the code that we write when we use exceptions and the code that we write when we don't use exceptions and we use expect. Then we have this sample example of division uh, that will check if the denominator is zero and will throw a divide by zero exception. This is code that is exception based. When we use the expected class from Alexander screw, we will define this safety by function like that. And instead of throwing ex an exception, we will uh, build an expected int from an er the error divide by zero. And if there is no issue, we will return an expected int with the division that it is always possible to do in this case because g is not zero. And we found that we are repeating here expected in too much times. We found that here expected in is redundant. And this is why we define uh, that the make unexpected is implicitly convertible to expected. And following the optional proposal, we uh, have that T is also implicitly convertible to expected EG. Okay, then in this, with this implicit, implicit conversion, we avoid to repeat uh, the type that we want as result. We have that this that doesn't ch change too much respect to the use of uh, the way we are propagati propagating errors when we use ex exception instead of throw in, we return, make unexpected. Okay? 
The problem is that this function that with exceptions return an int, now it returns an exception and ex ex expect int. And it will be more complicated to uh, compose this, these functions. Then I will skip this one because we have already seen that value will throw on error. And even if we have already checked that we have an error, if we call to value, we refer the, val the exception that was stored. Okay. Uh, let me show you how we define a function that uses the safe device function and calculate e plus g divided by k. Then we call to save divide. We check if q has a value. If it has a value, we do the e plus plus the contents of the division. Else, we propagate the error. Yes? Why can't you just q? Could you repeat? Okay. In this case, we can. I have used explicitly make respected in order to uh, state that we are propagating. Uh, in addition, take in account the case that the result was not int, but another type. Okay? Then it is clear not Q. Okay. And the fact that we call to make inspected uh, will allow us to convert to any expected exception pointer, independently of the type of T. Uh, sorry, the question was, could we re return Q directly. Yes? So make unexpected in this case returns an unexpected with an expected exception pointer int in inside. No. Make but unexpected. You, you, you crack that open. Make unexpected will take the error that it okay. is stored. It puts on an unexpected type. And this unexpected type is implicitly convertible to expected. So it's overloaded for expected. Yes. Okay. So it's a moment. So it's, <laughs> so it's convertible to expected, yes. Yes. If uh, I had it here, a uh, pointer to... If, if, the if instead of int in the expected, if it was um, a unique pointer of a base, and say it's divided, q was a unique pointer of a derived. Uh, in this case, doesn't matter. The question <laughs> is... Uh, uh, exactly uh, uh, does the delivery take, take <coughs> in account uh, if uh, the parameter was an unipointer t and uh, the result of save divide was a unipointer u that are convertible, something like, like that. In this case, it is not important because we ignore completely the type. <laughs> the type t is ignored. So maybe go to the previous slide where you actually return and convert, right? No, no this one. 
No? More, more? more. Where uh, division is divided. Yeah. Div yes, yes. Yeah. Because you say return i divided by j. Yes. So if this were not integers, yes. but you would have a unique pointer to derived class and the expected of unique pointer of base okay. class. Would that do with the conversion under yeah. the expected? Okay. Uh, here we, we have uh, a more adapted case uh, uh, to the question you you, you have. Uh, uh, the question is: Is expected e t? Uh, implicitly convertible from a type U that is uh, convertible to T. Uh, I, need, I need to revise <laughs> what I have done. Uh, I, I, uh, I think yes. I think yes. No. No. <laughs> no. So if you go back to your... Uh, why not? If you go back to your slide where you do EI equals curly bracket, curly bracket. This is uh, the, the reason we this cannot. That only works because there's only one constructor. Yeah. So then you know what yeah. the curly brackets mean. Uh, uh, this this re remember me something that uh, I uh, there is uh, 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 a, an assignment with a uh, type U, but only if uh, U, U is this uh, is the same as T. <laughs> okay, the, uh, I think that it's an optional design question. Yes, it is a quite quite a tricky co uh, as as uh, design. Uh. Okay. It is clear that this is not. Uh, as clear as if the function throw an, an, an exception. We are checking. Uh, this is clearly not not good code. It is clear. We know what it it do. They do, but it is not. We, we we can use the, the the a function that will uh, take care of this condition has respected a value or not then call the function if respected has a, a value return uh, otherwise propagate the error this is what fmap does. The name uh, is the same as the Haskell uh, fmap function. Um, it is used when the parameter expected is seen as a functor in the sense of Haskell. Okay? A functor is just that, something that accepts this fmap function that allows to call the function only in a given context. David? Um, so a bit of history behind the, the reason why they call that fmap. They really wanted to call it map. And they called it fmap because map was used for lists. But since we're in the C++ context and we don't have another map which is competing with <coughs> it, it might be so map. But it's a member function. Okay. <laughs> then you, you are suggesting that uh, instead of calling this function fmap in C++, we could call it just map. Okay. It seems that. Just Okay. The, the problem could, could be uh, uh, when, when the function it is not a member and. But uh, I am 
of course, open uh, all this uh, backshading about the names uh, and uh, the better the names are, the best. And this could be implemented as a free function. Right, and then we could Yes, we will, we will. Uh, then, uh, of course, uh, uh, the function that we pass via a lambda, we can use bind, we can use whatever we want uh, as, as a function. Then you continue with, uh, now the function, instead of throwing only one exception, it will throw two possible exceptions, and we will uh, define a function that will try to recover from one of the errors. Then, this is the exception-based code. We define a, an exception. If uh, the values are not divisible, we, in this case, we will throw a specific ex exception. Okay? And now we have someone else needs to <coughs> use this safe divide functions, but for, for him, uh, even when the, the, the values are not divisible, they want to use integral division. Okay? Then, this is the code on exception base, and this is the code using expected. Here I have used the same function proposed by uh, Andre Alexandrescu, has exception. And it works because we are, have access to E and G. Because has exception, not this divisible, don't allow you to, to, to have uh, the data that it is stored on the exception. Okay? This works in this case. In order to be able to take the information that is stored on the exception, we could use this uh, dot cat exception function that will request to to have the exception we want to catch, I have used here O2 from C14 in order to don't duplicate this information and just we access to the data provided by the, the exception. This function as previous one has exception, catch exception. My opinion are expensive because we need to do a try catch in order to do the pattern matching of the exception. I would like to have another way uh, with exception pointer to be able to let me know if you have this ex exception or give me this ex uh, exception. I know that you, you have it or as we could do with, for example, the class any. The class any is able to store a lot of things. And we are able to get with a dynamic cast, uh, any cast, we are able to, to, to obtain the store data. With exception pointer, we are not able. Okay. Okay, let me continue um, in order to see how this scale. We have to uh, calls to save divide 
and uh, we see that we are repeating the same kind of code and this is ugly but this is not less ugly we are we need to 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 embed the the function calls with using fmap and here we use also unbind unbind that the single difference is that the function we pass is a function that returns unexpected already okay then I this is the way we, we could work with uh, this kind of unbind uh, f map functions but it is quite it is good it is maybe better than the previous one because here we, we don't see the error propagation okay but then in this case in this particular case we could call the till to the free function f map that uh, will call to the function if all the expected values contain a value in this case this will be a better design and it would be great if we could have something uh, an expression that allow us to uh, write the things in a more uh, sec a structured way, sequential way, as uh, Ascal does, and it is also something similar to the uh, await proposal, in the sense that we continue if there is not an error, and otherwise we propagate the error. It seems to me that this kind of code could be more easy to write, to understand, but of course, we we'll need a change on the language that it is always difficult to justify. And the translation could be something like that. And see that now I I am using. But that would be served, I'm sorry. <laughs> it would serve instead of the resumable functions proposal, which is also a change to the language. This is much more general than resumable functions. I have not worked on deep on this. I, I am not sure what, what are the problems. Then I, I don't want to do. Uh, but to say that this could be more general than the await uh, proposal. What I say, it is more restrictive. In the, in the sense that we are using it only on one expression, not any way on a function. It is different. Anyway, this could be translated, uh, transformed to this expression, and here I use mbind as a free function in order to be used by any type that defines the overload for an embedding. David, you raise it. Waiting for change on the language. Do macro. Uh, it works. Uh, it is a macro. Uh, this is the first macro that I wrote, you know, to avoid. Uh, and here I use a macro spec that just do this kind of if the code that we have used uh, see the flat code. We don't use at all unbind. Okay.
a possibility in, the, in some specific cases. For expected could work, not for any monad. <laughs> This is that just like token combining? Sorry? This is the boost join just like token combining like the uh yes. It's uh, boost join as uh, the concat concatenation of the sample, yes. Okay. Just an example that uh, from the presentation of Alexandrescu uh a little bit modified. A way to to, to to get an int exception base, a function that match string, and a way to get an int range with a syntax e dot dot g. Uh, with exceptions, it is quite clear. This is a hypothetical input string range with two iterators. And with expected and the do notation, we have something that is quite close. Here, instead of doing assignment, we do this kind of assignment controlled by the result. Well, it seems that the time I will skip much more of the of this section on which I show how some of the um, something were implemented. Uh, it was just to I think that the, the main I I point is. that we define an expected type that it is implicitly convertible but that the, the construction from an error is explicit. I think that it is something similar to what we could have if we define a complex class that is implicitly convertible for I mean, an imaginary class that it is explicitly convertible from an int, from a float. Okay? This is something similar. Uh, Here, it is the overload we were calling before for making expected. It is not really needed, but I think that this explicit uh, we propagate there. Then uh, we have decided that. Expected ET, it is not convertible for E. It is for that we have created this unexpected type. And the opposite, it is not true. We cannot retrieve implicitly the. In we have no conversion implicit where towards the unexpected type. We use an, uh, <coughs> a specific uh, get to respected type or the make respected that we have overloaded. For the value is the same, implicit conversion and sorry. yes, this is a point of specialization for exception pointer. Uh, because we want to 
accept any any exception when we build unexpected. Then we we don't we are not only convertible from unexpected type exception pointer, but any unexpected type. Yes? So if expected has a conversion from unexpected type and it has a conversion from T, right? I, constructs, I can construct yes. an expected from unexpected or a T. Then the E equals curly brackets does, probably doesn't work anymore. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Maybe? Yes? Yeah, sure. I, I have tested, I, uh, the question is that, uh, the comment is that if expected is convertible from T implicitly and unexpected E, the expression E equal mustache mustache <laughs> uh, will not, will not work. I don't know how, how, how you spell it, uh, will not work. Uh, I think that I have this in my test. Then uh, we will we could check later. Okay. I have some depth about the default constructor. When I have an exception pointer, when I have an exception pointer, the default constructor will construct an exception pointer that has no exception, but respected has no value. Then when I try to get the value, I will not have an exception to throw. Then either, in this case, we have undefined the behavior, either we throw a specific ex exception. The current implementation throws an ex explicit exception. Because we consider that it is important that the expected is the full constructible. But, yes? So the default constructor puts it in an intermediate state where there's no exception and there's no value? Is that right? Yes, uh, it used the default constructor of the error and the default constructor of exception pointer is no exception, but an exception pointer with no exception. It is, it is not the question pointer with the exception that you will throw if there is no exception pointer in it. Yes, I can decide to, to default construct an exception pointer with an exception already. It's the same. I'm just curious. Do you know what happens if you, what is it? It's called stood rethrow re exception. It's a function. Undefined behavior. Hmm? Undefined behavior. With, uh, with the default constructed exception yeah. behavior? The question was, uh, do you know what happens when you rethrow an exception pointer, a default constructor exception pointer? Undefined behavior. Uh, you need to know if there is something or not. Okay, uh, with some mistakes here. All the, the operators, uh, uh, pointer-like operators, are there. Uh, don't don't ask me. I will take too much time. Why we have three, few over different overloads, and <laughs> this is. This is the, 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 imagine the M is stand for monad or expected or uh, the, the f future proposal has a then function that uh, has a parameter that has a feature and, ret uh, and returns a feature. And the function could return either a type or a feature. Then I have Try to, to, I think that both uh, in Haskell we have that, fmap ap applied to a function from t to u, return some monad like th this one. If uh, I have 
okay, the, the function returns already unexpected, we will uh, wrap the spec twice. This is with the fmap function. With the mbind function, we don't wrap. We don't wrap it. Okay, this is the main difference. Okay, and, and the catch error or catch exception uh, need to return the same type. We can recover, but we don't change the type. The definition of these functions are really simple and are there are a lot of errors on the slides and I will skip them. <laughs> you will there are a lot of errors. Uh, minor errors but they, they they are there. I will skip this one. Yes? Have you considered making expected not be default constructible? Yes. Are you have you considered to make expected not default constructible? I think that the best we can do is, is uh, uh, the single case we have it is this exception pointer. If we uh, agree that we could define an exception that means we don't have it. It is like if you initialize your error as I have an error. I don't know what, which error is. But by default, I have not a success. I need to, 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 to add a, a value, to set a value in order to, to see, say I, I, the function has succeeded. I think it's preferable to, to have this default constructor, but uh, yes. So in Kessel, we don't have the default constructor. No. So I'm, I'm wondering what what's the use case here for the default constructor? Is there some kind of container you want to store these in that requires it? Or? Containers, of course. The question is, Askel does, doesn't have uh, default constructors. Uh, what, which is, what is the use case to, to, to for this default constructor? Uh, yes, the idea is to be, to be able to, to store them on a, on, a, on a container, on an array, if you want. Uh, you need to, to, you want to store them in array, expected ET, uh, and after that, that, you can initialize and use them. Yeah, once in a mutation, Okay. You cannot set it later. Okay. Period. So let me let me uh, discuss about this point because I, I am not uh, I have also some depths that I would like to share with you. How how to expect it are compiled. And following optional unexpected values are always less than expected one. But how unexpected compare between them. Exception pointer doesn't compare. Would we expect that expected exception pointer compare and compares as optional t? Does mean that all the exceptions compare equal? I don't know. <laughs> From the uh, this could be um, counterintuitive because the, the, the type is observed differently because we can have different exceptions. Then, for the time being, we have decided that expected exception pointer is not comparable. And expected is comparable if E and T are comparable. Here's the definition. No, there's not, nothing complex here. Uh, 
here are the factories associated to the expected class, make expected, make expected with without parameter um, build a expected void. We have a special specialization for void because even if there is no value, we can use expected in order to uh, propagate the errors. have a specific function in order not to carry the, the, the current exception. No. Uh, able to, to make an inspector from an error. Uh, if you, we have the implicit conversion, but sometimes we want to, to state that we want an expected value, then this function uh, could be used to make expected from exception or make expected from error in order to uh, say the result is expected. And the previous one worked for exception pointer because we need to, to have a, an expected uh, an error by default, but w when we want an, uh, to build an expected that it is not associated to a, an exception pointer, we would like to do something like that, pass the error type as parameter, this I have not reached to do, to do it, uh, or just just uh, use the, the the default constructor and do you the int in this case is redundant or this is the tricky trick that I have found is to uh, consider that expected the error C is a type constructor for the expected ET and what I have is that the class T is default with a holder and we have a specialization and with this holder we are able to define this make function that uh, with uh, the template parameter T and the template parameter E is able to build unexpected e T. Then this is this allow us to, to build uh, to have a factory that not only is able to make expected <laughs> with the default exception pointer but also with a specific error. And I think that uh, this function make we could define a make functions a non-member function make that could take as parameter a, a type constructor that will be able to, to make uh, to build anything. And we will be able to have make optional, make expected, make ready feature, all of them using the same interface. Make the type of structure. I have not too much time to <laughs> we see that there this, we have one class that have a, 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 a specific case for the excep exception pointer that make it quite different from a class that use a, another any error. And I am wondering if these two classes shouldn't have a different name. Because they don't behave the same way. We don't have relation operators. The default constructor is not convenient. Uh, 
we could not hash, in this case, not neither. Uh, we could not have has exception or catch exception in this case. I think that maybe we need two, two different names. Okay, I think that the time is, and uh, I will skip some comparison I had with bus variant, bus optional, uh, optional uh, and feature. Uh, the idea is that all this type share a lot of things with the same semantics sometimes and that it will be it could be great that we could use all these classes with the same interface then uh, what is the, 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 the common interface between these classes should we add things uh, to optional, to, f to feature, or maybe should we add functions as non-member functions that could work with any type? This is uh, what uh, I want to work on. I have started, but I have not found yet uh, something that uh, uh, satisfied me completely. The equal um, we want that we wanted that the, the expected et behaves at as a t. Then I, I I'm not sure if the error must condition the quality of expected et because it is acc accidental. It is not. Uh, it is we can consider that all errors collapse on the same thing. Maybe it should behave similarly to not a number. Right? Not a number is yes. an example of a double that has a I don't know. This not a number does not compare to any other number. Yes. Maybe a separate member function for comparing that uh, obscures the unexpected value. Maybe uh, you've seen a different function uh, for comparing uh, when we collapse. Could be a good idea. Yes, I think. Uh, if we, I think that it could be needed sometimes to see uh, all these values as all the same. Another point is, uh, should the function that we pass to the continuation uh, be able to throw? And in this case, should the, la uh, the implementation use a try catch in order to recover the, the exception? This could be possible if the error is exception pointer, but it is RC. We are not able to, to do the translation. Then, currently, we have de decided that the function should not throw. And we could add some adaptator that, in the case of exception pointer, could do the, the, the try catch. Yes? I, I think for the sake of composability, fmap should allow any function, including a function that throws. Now, mbind mm. is different because mbind takes a function that already returns. Yes, and could uh, say the, with the result type uh, that there is an error already, but not fmap. I, you combine me, yes. It's the question was, sorry, that uh, it is not the same 
case between FMAP and MBIND, because MBIND returns already unexpected, and it is able to, to say that there is an error. But FMAP uh, should take any longer less, response. less. structure, hey, okay, I see it's it's optional, but it has another member in it to indicate why the thing is empty. <laughs> okay, kind of, kind of makes some sense. And then, you can follow the whole thing, and you can keep adding more and more machinery, and to deal with, I would say, kind of more and more narrow cases to the point I can't even keep track what it is anymore. And I'm wondering if one step back in the same beginning said, you know, what we should, if someone, if I'm sitting in my cubicle, like with a ripping headache, the guy next door comes over, he says, look, I got a function that's going to return either one of a couple different kind of errors or the value. I would say, especially since I got this big headache, just use boost variant and describe, and just specify each error type and the value type, and then do whatever you have to do to make it work. And then you would have something that you don't really have to read. I don't know, a couple pages of uh, code, or excuse me, a couple pages of documentation to just figure out what the thing did. I, you know, I'm wondering if we haven't really over-engineered the whole concept. Or maybe, okay. Let me put it a different way. That Andre's original idea hmm? seemed attractive when it was proposed, but when you bring it to its logical conclusion, maybe it loses its original appeal. I don't know, I'm not really asking for response. I'm just the the comment is, uh, <laughs> I, I tried to listen, is that uh, for Robert, uh, uh, it seems that there is over engineering uh, on this design, and uh, that uh, maybe using variant uh, will be uh, enough. Uh, and I, a, I, a use case or example, I uh, and then, oh, propose you, Robert, to just use variant and write the examples that there is there are on the on the slides. Yeah, that's just that's there are that's very fair. simple example. Write them. Um, it seems like <laughs> the whole idea of adding a monadic syntax is independent of this class right here. Um, right. And I wonder if it might come across as confusing because there's really two two things going on and actually I think the monadic syntax is probably the more sophisticated of the two. So I'll just throw that out there. Yes. The comment is that uh, the monadic syntax uh, it is not as specific uh, to this class and that uh, it would be great to have this uh, for all monads but we don't have neither the syntax for monadic syntax we don't, we have only libraries. Uh, so, you know language that already has built-in exceptions? Yes. What does this bring? Do you know a language that has built-in exceptions? This is the question? No, what the benefit is to not use exceptions, but this. Well, uh, I can uh, take into account that uh, you don't have always exceptions, and then expected error C it is a, a solution, a possibility. Uh, even when you use exception pointer, you are not using uh, exception machinery until you decide to uh, get the value without knowing if the value is there or not. That means that it is up to you to decide uh, when you use a if then else uh, like code or an exception code. But you can decide it later on. And you are able to propagate uh, 
you can use also this expected type in order to propagate values between threads, even if the values are already ready, but because you transport either a value or an exception. It is not a feature because value is ready at, construct, at construction or before this transferring. This is another use case you, can, you could have. Uh, you could have uh, uh, callbacks that give you this uh, value or an exception also. Exceptions are there and very useful. I have not seen saying that. Uh, and take into account that this library don't prevent uh, from exceptions. Only the exception that you want to transfer using this mechanism are stored like that. Uh, but a lot maybe goes don't go to, to this case. to have an expected t but what you get is always exception pointer and when you have another type you construct an exception of mm, bad okay. expected access that binds that type mm -hmm. and produce an exception pointer eventually for that that would allow you to be transparent about the f yes yes but I don't want to, to pay for a, an exception pointer when, when I can pay an int. The question was, why don't implement expected e t in function of expected exception pointer t? Uh, the, the goal to add this parameter was to, 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 to be more efficient in these cases. Then, uh, uh, I think that in this case, it is better to have only an exception pointer uh, implicit error and we have only one class and you, you move your error time directly. Two, two quick questions. Um, the exception pointer that you might want to consider standard less doing something different than operator less standard less than you can order them into containers? And Sorry, I, I understood. Would you repeat? Standard less, right? Overload standard less, because that's what map and things use. Yes. And have it work slightly differently than operator less than, because... When I have not considered it. Right, because that's way you might decide how to show the... The container. question was, uh, have we considered two of to specialize uh, standardless. Stand yes. Um, my last question is, why, why is it E comma T and not T comma E? Yes, important. Yes. Uh, initially, uh, the question is, why it is not expected T E? E And uh, <laughs> we have, I have changed that in order to be able to uh, use expected E as a type constructor. Uh, because the monad, uh, when we, we work, uh, working in order to try to, to make all these things as monads, uh, the monad is not expected ET, the monad is expected E. Plus, you say expected int. That means I kind of expect an int. Yes. Yes. Maybe. Maybe. <laughs> ma maybe. 
I, I, it originally, I, uh, and uh, the default error was also an exception pointer, then you, you state expected int, it is what quite clear. I, I am not happy uh, yeah. with, uh, with the change. I have changed it in order to, to uh, make, ex make, be able to, to, to uh, use expected error C as subtype. Uh, maybe we need another class in order to name the type constructor. Probably. Probably. Yeah. Because it's more natural to use expected int. Yeah. That. So more questions? Okay, I can Last question. Can I ask you? Okay. okay, thank you.